Greetings from St. Perpetua Community. I recall seeing a fascinating exhibit at one of San Francisco's museums a few years ago. Eternal Egypt was a display of ancient masterworks from the British Museum. The exhibit's artwork, primarily created for temples or tombs, depicted dynasties of pharaohs. Most of the statues of the pharaohs looked pretty serious. Few were smiling. You wouldn't be smiling either if you had to maintain order among every living creature in the universe and also keep the gods happy. I was overwhelmed by the size and power of the stone sculptures. How long did it take to carve it? How many slaves did it take to move it? What mindset was at work in that culture to make one person or one family so special that thousands gave their lives over to serving these godlike rulers? An old Spanish proverb says, the corpse of the Pope takes up no more room than the sacristans. Yet here was a civilization dedicated for over 3,000 years to preserving for eternity the lives of of their leaders. I guess it's not that strange. Every culture has its testimonials to those who hold authority. The Lincoln Memorial, George Washington Monument, even our own little local town square has its statue of General Lafayette. Any time we look up to and admire a great person, we feel the challenge that comes from their lives. We're moved to imitate their virtues, we're given ideals for which we can strive, strong models to imitate. But we need to recognize that they are only human. So like you, I struggle to understand how a mob of thousands of Americans a week ago could give themselves over to do the bidding of a leader, a president, who is offering them nothing to emulate but anger over loss and a non-stop litany of lies about an election that was fair and free, as validated by legitimate courts and judges. There is a lack of personal freedom when we are so tied into the authority of another person that our judgment is clouded, our conscience blocked, and common sense ignored. There are many lessons to be learned in the painful aftermath of the deadly attack on our nation's Capitol building. Surely one of them is the need for every citizen to develop the ability to think critically and to act according to the dictates of a well-formed conscience. Without critical thought and without an inner moral compass, we can't face reality as it is and respond to it from a higher place in our better selves. May our nation be led by new leaders who will awaken our better selves and urge us to strive for the highest ideals.